I'm stranded in an Alaskan forest. I want to make my way down to the sea, but there's an obstacle. This waterfall. It's over 200 foot and it's risky. But I'm an experienced climber and I'm going to show you how to get down it. The most important thing when you start down here uh, is to take your time. And so many accidents happen climbing as the adrenaline gets going and you rush it. And I'll tell you, you can get it right a thousand times, but you only need one mistake for it to all go wrong. These rocks are incredibly slippery and it's easy to make mistakes. To make it down, I'll need to follow some basic climbing rules. Let your legs take the pressure. You know, so many people try and always climb with their arms and the, your arms give up. Your legs are much, much stronger. And just use your, your arms to steady you and to balance you. There's loads of loose rocks, so I have to test every handhold. The force of the water now about halfway down is making it much harder. It's like trying to down climb whilst giving someone a piggyback. OK. The final bit is almost vertical. This freezing glacial water is a torrent, and it's pushing me down hard. And the cold is making it much worse. <sighs> this water is just so cold. And my hands are getting so numb out there, I can hardly, hardly hold on. But I tell you what, looking back up there, that is much steeper than I ever thought it was going to be when I started down it. Whew. I've come out into one of the many small inlets that dot the Alaskan coastline. My best chance of rescue is to be spotted by one of the many small fishing boats that fish this area. Hey, look at this, look, it's a dead salmon. And look, there's another one over there. This is great news, it means the salmon are using this to run upstream. And this is what they do, they'll return for often like up to 200 miles out to sea. They'll find the exact same river they were born, even the same tributary, return to it, lay their eggs, and then they'll die. The river is packed with king and pink salmon. I haven't got a fishing line with me, so I need to find another way of catching one. I'm making a spear out of wood. I found a tree where the branches fork out in a V about four foot along the main stem. The first step is to clear all the other shoots and then break off the two branches and cut them into sharp points. These will puncture the tough skin of the fish and keep it pinned down while I grab it with my hands. Making my spear only took about 10 minutes, but catching a fish could take an awful lot longer. There must be a thousand salmon in this pool down here. Uh, but it's too deep for me to be able to spear one. But I reckon if I can spook them and drive them up into the shallows, then I'll have a good chance. My tactic's working. The fish are going just where I need them. I can see just loads and loads of them there, and they're in about six inches of water. And the key is just for me to approach from downstream very steadily. One of the salmon's main predators are eagles, which swoop in from above, so the fish are highly sensitive to shadows. If they see mine, they'll be off. I'm waiting for the perfect opportunity. As I stand motionless, the fish start to come closer, but they always seem to be just out of my reach. And they say the key for fishing is patience. I'm probably the least patient person you'll ever meet. <laughs> now I'm going to take a more aggressive approach. Ooh. Whoa! 
I had it, it's like, that was so close. Ah, I got it. Come here. And this one is gonna be a cracker. I've got him pinned through the gills on either side here, and I get my finger right through where I've speared him at the back to keep a hold of him. And you can eat these things straight out of the river like that. Mm. That is like the freshest Alaskan salmon you can possibly have. I've always liked sushi, and in the local Iyak communities, the annual fish runs were the primary food source for the entire year. Fish are packed full of protein, and the scales are small on a salmon, so you can eat the skin as well, as it contains high levels of fat. Just what my body needs to keep moving. It's been two days now since I had a square meal, and I'm gonna take full advantage of this feast. I might be out of the forest, but I know that I'm still surrounded by bears. They come down here to fish. Hey, look at this, look. This is why you've got to be so careful around here. Look, you can see where, where a bear has obviously come down and plonked his fat backside down here and started to feast on this salmon. But amazing, you actually see, look, the imprint of where he's been. And actually, you can see the bit that is eaten is all the belly fat and the eggs and the guts. So that's the most fat and protein rich, and then it just leaves the rest of it. But this is why you've got to be so careful out here. It's early evening, and I've got to find a place to rest. Caves are ready-made shelters, but they're often already occupied by wildlife, including bears. This one is so shallow that I know it's safe, and it's a perfect place to stop. The high walls mean that nothing could sneak up on me from behind. I need all the rest I can get now, as I have no idea what lies ahead. <laughs> 